be an officer involved shooting, you have an officer down. An officer involved shooting, the first in a series of violent events shaking Pennsylvania. Multiple communities honoring a trooper killed in the line of duty. Another hurt. The shooter dead in a scene described as a war zone. 29 year old trooper Jacques Rougeau killed in the line of duty. 45 year old Lieutenant James Wagner fighting for his life. The shooter opening fire at Troop G headquarters, then leading authorities on a hunt through Mifflin Town. He looked like the day was going to be his last day. The shooter eventually killed by troopers. And tonight we tell the story of two men killed and hurt while defending others. We want to give you now a timeline in Mifflin Town. State police say the shooter, Brandon Stein, was playing a game of cat and mouse. It all started at the Troop G headquarters, where officials say Stein opened fire at patrol cars in the parking lot. The hours long search went through multiple parts of the community. State police say around 1245, Lieutenant Wagner was shot by Stein. Trooper Rougeau was shot and killed around 230. Everything came to an end around 3 p.m. on Saturday. Officials say they do not have a motive for this incident and Stein was not on their radar beforehand. Check this graphic out from 2018 to 2023. The PPL default rate has nearly doubled. So to find out the best rate for your family, we're going shopping. We're shopping for electricity. Here's the website you need to know. I'm going to show you how you do it. It's PAPowerSwitch.com. You're going to immediately put in your zip code. Once you're there, who sends you your monthly bill? So for me, it's PPL Electric Utilities. I'm paying, what, 14 cents? Per kilowatt hour, can I do better? Yes, and here is how. So what we're going to do is I'm going to press fixed rate results. That's going to keep my monthly bill consistent throughout the contract that I decide to pick. From there, I want to make it super easy. So I'm going to pick no cancellation fees, no monthly fees, and no enrollment fees. And then I'm going to go up and I am going to say that I'm going to sort this from the lowest price to the highest price. And from there, it's giving me my options as low as seven cents, okay, per kilowatt hour. That's cutting my bill in half, right? But here's the deal. Really quickly, I want you to look at the term length. This is only three months, which means I'd have to hop back on this website in three months. So something to look for, and I'll be uh, posting this to cbs21.com so we can shop around together for our electricity. Sounds fun, right? Thank you for joining us at five. I'm Jasmine Brooks. I'm Joel D. Smith. Lieutenant Lebo and his wife, Laura, would have celebrated their 14th wedding anniversary just this past Tuesday. Protecting the public was his job, but when he was home, Laura says he protected her. And tonight, she's sharing some of her most personal memories with us. Memories that make her laugh and smile. That's the Bologna Ranger costume. The what? The, the Bologna <laughs> Ranger costume. I thought he was hysterically funny. What was he like as a police officer? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly don't know. When Lieutenant William Lebo was home, this hat and this badge were off. He kept me very intentionally away from that life. He didn't want anything bad to come into this house. A house that he and his wife, Laura, made their own for more than a decade. He did this entire room. We've done almost all the backyard. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. Yeah. I see a lot of ducks. <laughs> it became our tradition that wherever we went, we would get a wood bird. Belize, Cancun, Jamaica. The couple planned to hunt for another wooden bird while celebrating Lieutenant Lebo's 40 years of service in Panama City. 30 Later. days. He was 30 days shy of retirement. We had planned a trip to celebrate his retirement. Three days after he passed away, you put a picture on Facebook. That picture. That picture. That picture. Vacation bill. You write on Facebook, I am choosing to forgive the perpetrator in this incident and offering my condolences to his family. I ask the community to do the same. Because 
forgiveness is for the person doing the forgiving. I needed to let go. Letting go of the dark and holding on to the light and the memories she's surrounded by every single day. Every inch of this house is him. His pictures, his glasses, his urn. He was the love of my life. He's my everything. I think there's people that will go a lifetime and never find love like you had it. I am very lucky. I am very lucky to have had him. Multiple meetings between the president and Speaker McCarthy. So let's start with Mark. What is something that you think Biden can compromise on, give up? Well, he's already offered a couple of things. One is the clawback of the unexpended uh, COVID monies. And he's also indicated he's willing to do some of the energy projects and relieve some of the regulations. Uh, the Republicans just don't seem to be able to take yes for an answer. The Biden administration has spent us into oblivion. All right, so the GOP presidential field is swelling. We have Tim Scott uh, announcing yesterday. So who do you think that Biden would like to see run against him? Since the first pair of Air Jordans were released in 85, sneakerheads have been buying, selling, and collecting these iconic shoes. In 1985, the world got its first opportunity to wear the same sneakers as a basketball legend. Man was not meant to fly. Air Jordan. I was a 10-year-old kid growing up in Philadelphia, and when Jordan, you know, Michael Jordan became a star, and Jordans first came out. Brian Dean's original black, red, and white Nike Air Jordan is on display inside his sneaker boutique. John's on fire. And I loved wearing them. I wore them for a year and a half until I had two holes in the bottom and my toes were crawling under. I didn't know it at the time, but that was the beginning of, call it sneaker culture. A culture that has turned the sneaker market into a multi-billion dollar industry, expected to reach $30 billion by 2030. Why are sneakers so important? It's just, it just style. It's a yeah. lifestyle. Sneakers are a lifestyle. And with the lifestyle comes the lingo. Let's start with the basics. Sneakerhead. A sneakerhead is somebody that starts their outfit with what sneakers they're gonna wear. Dead stock. DS or dead stock means brand new. Yeah, I know what a John is too. And that would be what? That's a person, place, or thing. It's, just, it's your John, it's your personality. It's what you like. Or what mom likes, in Nico Tarasi's case. I'm wearing my mom's shoes right now. <laughs> when, I, when I put them on, I'm like, wait, what? I need to like them too because we were wearing the same size. I'm new to the sneaker game, but this touch screen makes it really easy to navigate through the 1300 styles of sneakers inside this boutique. But I'm learning there's another game in town and he's 15. I usually just get pairs and I'll post them on Instagram and I'll have an asking price and I'll tell them to give me an offer. Brayden Zimmerman doesn't even have a driver's license yet, but he's accelerating past most boys his age. He's cashing in thousands of dollars from buying sneakers in store and online and then reselling them. The money per hour I'm making is a lot compared to getting a regular day job. So I could, I probably, I sold these ones in like an hour, made 40 bucks, opposed to having a day job making 12 an hour. And he has quite the reputation at school. He knows what's fake, he knows what to get. He knows how to get it. He knows when to get it. He can get you anything really at any time. Can you pick yeah. something that you think would something. work for me? Yeah. Okay, you guys go do that. That's pretty. Yeah, it looks, it's a good shade of orange and I think you would like it. Yes, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay, I love it, I love it. These are really stand out from everybody else. Nobody really has these. What do you think of my shoes now? I mean, they're all right. <laughs> we can hook you up with some Johns in here, but. We went to the Dock Street Dam today to get you some video to really show you what's going on when we're talking about low head dams. Here's the deal. If you are upstream, the water is going to appear very, very calm. As you approach this low head dam, the current is going to be stronger and it's going to be faster. But think of an infinity pool. It's hard to see the edge here or the drop off. And it's the same situation if you're coming downstream. Only this time, it looks a lot different compared to maybe a waterfall. You can actually see right here, this is your reverse 
current, very visible. However, still strong, still impactful, and all the same result because here is your low head dam. And once you get pulled inside into the water below, it is turbulent. It is spinning around like a washing machine. It will pull you in or your boat and you won't be able to escape easily. All cool. right, here we go. Raise your hand if you've ever been personally victimized by Regina George. That's a phrase from <laughs> Mean Girls, the iconic movie that we all love. And today is coined Mean Girls, Girls Day. Day. Now the musical is coming to Hershey straight from Broadway, and you're going to want to go. This is the, the cake. The and theater gave us this. this we is, think this is a Rice Krispie Treat, right? Okay, look and at this. Get, get on camera one here so before we totally just take a oh, gigantic yeah. bite. A this is the burn there. book. So if you didn't watch the movie you Mean Girls, it's so cool. The musical will still be oh, oh. Stop it right now. <laughs> stop it right now. Okay. Show everybody that. We have a fork, but I think this you gotta just get a just get a big bite of that burn book. Mmm. Testing every single one of them yeah. out there is the amazing palette of Jasmine Brooks. Jasmine, go for it. I literally think barbecue chips are spicy, so I seriously have not yet tried any, but I'm going to do it for you guys live on air eventually. First, Melissa from Veg Out. Hi. I love this little spoon. What do you have going on here? This is a topping. Yes, yeah, so we just made some fun spoons to go with the chili. We did a non-spicy chili, okay, so I'll yes, you can enjoy one. ours. Okay. It's creamed with our root vegetables because I do seasonal produce here at the market. Okay. It has Hummer's meats in and their cheeses. And so this is some of their cheeses yeah. with our chili rubs. And then we did some peppers that aren't quite in season, but we creamed the soup with our root vegetables. So I so. love it. Uh, will you pour me some and I'll come right back and try it? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Let's go over here. My friend Dallas. Hey, Dallas. How are you? Hi. How are you doing? Hey. And this is your dad. Yes. yes hello. Hi. Hi. So, Dallas, you have a stand called Honeybush Raw Smoothie Bar. Okay, but your dad whipped up some chili. Yeah, yeah. called Dag and Dad Daddy's Vegan Chili. I just made a new friend, Jean. You said you're 93? So you've been coming here for how long? Many years. I used to live here in McKennysburg. And you moved to Carlisle. Yes. Well, uh, my son, I brought my son. Where is he? he? Just where did he go? Boy. Up there. Ah, hi, son. <laughs> okay, I'll let you go because they're like, you took our mom. It was great to meet you, Jean. Thank you. See I you. watch you every night. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, it's time to wrap. Um, hopefully my husband's here and can grab this. Yep. Okay. So we'll send it back to you.